What's going on guys? Today we got a 1992 Honda CV 750 Nighthawk. Um, I bought this about a week ago. I gave $900. Buddy said that uh, he couldn't get it to run. He said it was a carburetor problem. Which, uh, it probably does have a carburetor problem, but we're not sure. When we got it back, we looked at it for about a couple hours and I made a little gas tank to uh, not use the gas tank because we looked into it and it was really dirty. It's got a lot of rust in it and we used that to get it running and all we did is add gas and it started right up. So I don't think we had such a big problem with the carburetors. I think it's more with the tank and the pickup than that. Uh, we also found that the stator is not charging the battery at changing the stator and I bought a rectifier as well just to change it since we're going to be there anyways. We're going to be cleaning the tank. The tank is really rusty and uh, the guy gave me a new rebuild kit with the uh, rebuild kit for the carburetor when I bought it and he also gave me a new pet cock so we're going to be changing that as well. I don't know if we're going to be doing the rebuild on the carburetor. I'm not planning on keeping this bike. If I sell it, I'm going to give it to whoever buys it and they can rebuild it if they wish to. It was running pretty good the way we had it, so. Uh, I got the parts right here. I also bought some lights. I think these ones are too short for the front, but we're going to be changing the back ones, I'm pretty sure. And we're going to try to fix the front ones because they broke. They always break pretty much every single one that I've seen. The middle, the middle of that light is broke, so we're going to change that, try to fix it. And I got the rectifier and the stator. Uh, they were about $113 and I bought the bike for about $900. So all in all, we don't have a whole lot in it. And I've seen these bikes in the condition it is going for about $25, $28. So I think we got a pretty good deal on it. So enough of that. Let's go ahead and get started with uh, changing the parts. All right, guys. So first we're going to be removing the tank. And then we're going to be going after the stator, which is right there. It's on the outside. I know some uh, motorcycles have them inside the case, but this one's actually on the outside. And it's super easy to change. As you can see, it's got some uh, Allen bolts. And uh, after you get that off, it's you just got to slide it out. And then you can put the new one in and disconnect all the connections, of course. Uh, first, you're going to have to remove the tank. It only has a 12 millimeter nut or bolt on it. Remove that and remove all the gas lines going to the uh, carburetor or pickup. And then you can just slide the tank right off. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how the tank looks. So if you can see that, it's a little rusty. A lot of the rust in it though, it's, uh, it's not deep in it. It's just uh, barely on there. So I think it's going to be fairly easy to clean uh, I believe this bike's been seen since 2010 so that's about 13 years so it's not the greatest but I think we can get that clean fairly easy I got this uh, we're gonna be using this ox oxalic acid uh, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it but it is what it is uh, we're gonna be using a quarter of a cup to a gallon of that and we're going to be filling the tank and leaving it in there for, I don't know, maybe 24 hours, if not longer. We're going to keep checking on it and see how it goes. So we're going to go ahead and remove the tank. We're going to be taking off this uh, 12, meter, 12 millimeter bolt. So let's go ahead and do that. So go ahead and remove the 12 millimeter, millimeter bolt. And uh, once that comes off, you should be able to slide the tank right off. All the lines, all the gas lines going to the carburetor and the pet cook have been removed. So it should be easy to slide up. So go ahead and lift up and slide back and it should come off. Since this bike's been sitting for a while, it might be a little harder. But uh, that's basically it. We're going to go ahead and set the tank over here on the jack and you might be asking why are we not using the tank well we don't think we're going to be doing a whole lot of work to it so there was no point in putting it on the on the stand there so that's the tank the tank is in really good shape the paint is really good uh it's got a little dent here 
and uh, I think another scuff right here but overall the bike is in really good shape for uh, the year and how many years it's been sitting so the tank is off we're gonna go ahead and start with the stator there's a connection at the top that you have to unplug and I believe that's the only connection that's coming from it so let's go ahead and get that disconnected you might want to use a pick with it and uh, the plastic is old so sometimes they can crack but if you push on on that with a pick you might you can slide it off There you go guys, once you do that, after you unplug the connector, come down here and get the three, um, I don't know what size they are, what Fine. size, five millimeter alley bolts, loosen them up and then take them off, it might be real tight. So this should only be a cover. We did this on a 1981 or 82 Honda CB650 Nighthawk and it was very similar to this. Seems like they didn't change a whole lot with it. And it had the same problem as this one, so it seems like that's still the same problem. But they make it fairly easy to change as far as where it's located. So loosen them up, wiggle it a little bit, and it should come right off. So as you can see, there's a little bit of rust on it. And that's just from sitting. And it's going to happen. It doesn't matter uh, what it is. But that's the fan that cools it. And you take this uh, bolt, you got to take this bolt off, and it should come right off. So let's go ahead and take that one off. Alright guys, so this uh, bolt here tends to rotate as you turn it, so you're going to want to use an impact air gun or a battery of the big, bigger impact guns if you have one. So let's go ahead and take this off. As you can see, it comes right off. If you try to use a rasher or a breaker bar, um, it just spins the whole thing. It's a lot harder, so I recommend using an impact air gun or a battery one, a bigger one. So once you do that, this is, as you can see, it's got a lot of rust in it. So usually it's hard to pull out, but you just got to wiggle it and keep playing with it until it comes out. It's a little easier if you remove the centerpiece. So let's go ahead and remove that centerpiece first. You might want to use a pick or a... Just something to get in between there and pull it off. It's got a it's got a ping on it, a hole that lines up with the with the actual bike here. And so there's no way to put it to put it back in wrong. So just keep going back and forth with it, and it should come right out. And it comes out with the cable. Now, uh, to remove the actual plug, you might want to remove the air box, but we don't want to touch, we want to touch as little as possible with this bike. We don't want to uh, take any bolts off or parts that we don't have to. So what we did is we removed that and have extra room here to pull the cable and we can guide it through. If you remove this uh, bolt on the air box right here, there's uh, one on the top and then we'll remove one on the other side uh, by the battery cage. So if you remove that, you can put some pressure on the top and then move this plug all the way back here and then you can just pull it out. Uh, it's a lot easier and you don't have to take the air box off. So let's go ahead and do that. So just like that, it's a lot easier. You don't have to remove the air box and just fish it all the way out 
All right, guys. So it came out. Um, it was a little difficult getting it through in between the the intake boots there. Um, you can remove that if you want. We didn't have. We didn't want to. So we just pushed it down through there. If you take your time, you can work it out of there. So there you go. That's the that's the stator right here. Uh, it's a lot better than the other ones as far as taking it off and putting a new one back in. As you can see, it's got a lot of uh, rust in it, even in the inside. I think maybe some water got in there. Um, overall, it doesn't look too bad, but it wasn't charging. So let's go ahead and take a look at the newer one. So when you put the new one next to it, you can tell how it looks. And uh, you can see that that's got some wear on it. So let's go ahead and throw the new one. The new one is exactly the same, same plugs and everything. So it should be just a pop one out, put it back in there, and it should be good. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and put the new one in. The cable goes to the back, and uh, just wiggle it in there. Find a. Uh, you can clean the inside of it, but uh, it wasn't too bad in there. So we're just gonna swap the new one in and be done with it. When you're putting it in, uh, make sure this groove here lines up with the bolt hole. Um, I don't know if it's necessary, but uh, we're going to do it that way just to match it. How we pull the old one out. So once you got it in there and uh, it feels like you got it all the way in, you can go ahead and put the top part in and guide it all the way in. Make sure it's not going in crooked. Alright guys, once you get that in there... Um, you can go ahead and tighten it up. Uh, you can use an impact like this. Uh, just don't put a whole lot of torque in there. Uh, I don't know the specs for it. You can look it up, but just tighten it a couple of times like that, and uh, it should be good. That should hold. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put the cover on. That cover is just held in there by three Allen bolts, as you can see right there. And if you guys have a pretty big gap right there between the cover and the actual uh, motor, um, you can tighten this up and then it'll guide it all the way through and then take the cover back off, tighten the center bolt again and then put the cover back on and that should take care of that. So go ahead and tighten these bolts up. Again, I don't know the code specs for this. Um, you can find it pretty easily online, but we're not worried about it too a whole. And that should be good. That cover is not going in anywhere. So for the cable, we decided we're gonna run it. This is where the original one was. We're gonna run it through here. You got more space on this side and it's easier to get it through than to right there. So we're going to make that adjustment. So go ahead and run it under the boots. And right there in the middle, it should come right up. And it's uh, a lot easier than through the center one. Unless you take the whole intake box and everything out, then you wouldn't have this uh, problem. So once you get all that come back to where we got it out push it through and then run the cable back down and then plug it back in this cable seems to be a little longer I'm not 
entirely sure but uh and here uh sometimes they here let me show let me show me the sometimes this pin pins here are a little bent and it won't go in so if you're trying to put it in and it's not going in don't force it take it out make sure the pins are not bent and then put it back in So if it's not going in easily, make sure the pins are not bent. And these pins seem to be a little thinner and they seem to want to bend a little easier. Make sure it's all the way in, locked in, and the excess, you can run it back down. Just pull it in off. And that should be good right there. That's the stator, guys. Uh, all right, guys, so we just got done changing the stator. Now we're going to go change the rectifier, which is really simple to change if you go to the front. Right where the gas tank goes, there's a, a rubber piece right here, and that holds this cover, and the rectifier is right on behind that. So all you gotta do is pull this off. I'm gonna let my brother do it so you guys can see it. Pull the rubber piece off, and then that comes right off, and the rectifier is right there. Super easy to change. Uh, anybody can do it, just like the stator. That's why I like these uh, bikes a lot. They're simple. So just take those two bolts off. I believe they're 10 millimeters. Now, I don't think this part's bad, but uh, since we got the new one, I'm just going to go ahead and change it. And it's fairly old, so... And as you can see there, that's the ground. And look at how the ground looks on the back. It's pretty rusted, so maybe there was some problems there too. Just like the connector from the stator, you might want to use a pick with it or you can just press it down and it comes right off. That's the original one, I believe. I don't think this has been changed. Uh, this is the new one. It's pretty much uh, the same doesn't have any markings on it but uh if you see the ground there it's fairly rusted so you want to clean that out so you get a good connection uh, it's not necessarily good and it doesn't really matter because it has a bolt going through but you do want to clean that up since you already have it out so go ahead and do that so go ahead and plug it in should be plug and play Make sure you get the ground in there with the bolt and put it back where it goes. You don't have to go crazy on tightening them up just a little bit and it should be good. Put the plastic cover back on and put the rubber piece on it. Make sure it grabs the cable and you should be good. Now we're going to get it started with the little makeshift gas tank that we made. Uh, we got this here. Uh, you can buy them. I already ordered one, but we needed one right away. So we just built this. This used to be a little siphon pump. 
and uh, that's just a container We've got a hose going to it and that, that can be connected to the carburetor and uh, that way you can work on stuff and you don't have to have the tank plug in especially because this tank is so dirty so um, we're gonna go ahead and get that filled with gas and we're gonna plug it directly to the carburetor right here I'm gonna start it up and see if it's charging